Ella es TED Speaker, instructora de Java y desarrolladora del software Chick-fil-A. Así que un aplauso enorme para Kisha Williams, por favor. A young girl from the middle of nowhere starts her career with the NSA having a top secret security clearance. She moves to become a software engineer for a company called Chick-fil-A. And this time last year, July of 2017, she actually gave a TED talk on machine learning. And now, She's standing before you on a stage in Madrid at Keep Coding Connect 2018. Now, <laughs> I'm sure when you see me, you don't see a top secret spy that works for the NSA. You may not even see a software engineer. So I'm going to tell you about my journey to the stage today. As a young girl, I believed that computers would soon control the world. So I wanted to be the one to control the computers. So yes, I had dreams of ruling the world. <laughs> And I still have those dreams. But what I've found in my journey in tech is that technology actually does rule the world. It controls the world and it can make the world a better place. And technology gives a voice to its creators. So all of us developers, we have a voice. Now, that young girl that you saw, at that age, that's when my fascination with technology began. And so you would think someone that age that her favorite toy would be a Barbie doll. I did have my share of Barbies. I had the Ken doll, the Barbie dream home, the Barbie convertible, and I even had a Barbie horse. But those were not my favorite toys. My favorite toy looked a lot like this computer. So when I was in the middle school, late middle school, early high school, my father actually purchased a personal computer to do the family finances. And he put it in my playroom. So we had this room that was the playroom slash office. And I always joke with people and say, in one hand, I had a Barbie doll. And in the other hand, I had a computer manual writing computer programs using the basic programming language. So that may date how old I am. <laughs> And so at the time, I didn't realize that what I was doing was called coding. I just called it playing with the computer. And to this day, when I'm on my computer building software, it still feels like playing because it's so much fun. And so technology has taken me from a very small town to work with major corporations and government agencies across the United States, serving in various roles, doing web development, software engineering, leadership, project management, business analyst type work, and even building software using AI technologies. And I also did a few top secret security things that I can't tell you about, because if I did, I'd have to hunt you down one by one and kill you, just like they do in the movies when you least expect it. So my 23-year journey has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of playing, but I have also faced trials and tribulations. Um, so there is this one picture that whenever I see it, I laugh because it really describes my experience as a black woman in technology. Okay, <laughs> so you see the queen? That's me, that's me in tech. And you see everybody else, that's everybody else in tech. So I don't see a lot of people that look like me. And I often feel alone and isolated. So you'll see me working with a lot of communities like women who code, because there are women who actually code. And some other, I guess, trials and tribulations, I often feel sometimes like I'm under a microscope because I'm just so different. Sometimes I feel like I'm held to a different standard because I'm different. And I often have to prove myself over and over and over again because I'm different. 
And now I don't feel bad about the things that I've encountered. I'm actually grateful because it's helped me find myself. It's helped me learn more about what I'm capable of, and it's helped me to find my voice in tech. So now that I've found my voice in tech, what do I use it to say? I do a lot of talking. <laughs> so I use it to say, we need to have more diversity in technology so that people like me don't experience the things that I've experienced. I use my voice to say we have a big reliance on artificial intelligence, so things like machine learning and computer vision and facial recognition, and our reliance is just going to continue to grow. And so that makes a strong case for diversity in technology so that we build systems that don't have bias. And so I'll also use my voice and skills to teach and mentor the younger generation of women so that they can quickly find their path and their voice in this male-dominated industry. And I use my power and my creative ability to build systems that make life easier and sometimes more fun. So, whenever I use my voice and my skills, it often brings a lot of attention my way. And that's why I'm standing before you today a little girl from a small town called Monk's Corner in South Carolina. And so this time last year, I shared on the TED stage as a winner of their Spotlight Presentation Academy about how machine learning can actually remove human bias from policing. I also won the Ada Lovelace Award. Now, Ada Lovelace is the very first computer programmer, and she was a woman. I actually won the Ada Lovelace Award for a predictive policing machine learning algorithm that I created called SAM, and I'll tell you more about SAM later. And I also won a second place not too long ago in a Cloud Guru Speak Up Challenge. So I created an Alexa skill, that's an app for Alexa called STEM Women. So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And so I created that skill just to show positive role models of women doing amazing things in STEM. And then lastly, I won the Think Different Innovation Award from Chick-fil-A for just thinking outside of the box using voice-first technology to solve some of the company's business challenges. So you'll find that when you find your voice in tech, it could lead you to doing a lot of different things. So innovating, mentoring, teaching, and speaking. And so from an innovation perspective, I mentioned to you Sam. So just think pre-crime from Minority Report. So a machine learning algorithm that predicts the likelihood of crime. And the cool thing about Sam is that he actually eliminates racial profiling when he's making a crime prediction. So in America, that's huge. And then I mentioned to you my STEM women Alexa skill, but I've played around and created several other skills as well. So skills that help busy families plan meals. Skills that help families bond around the dinner table playing games. Skills that I actually created with my 11-year-old daughter, who already calls herself a computer programmer. Skills to help young kids learn how to spell hard words and me memorize their math facts. And so I also use that voice mentoring. I told you I like to really increase diversity in technology, and I work with young girls and women through programs like Women Who Code, Technovation, New York Academy of Sciences, and my favorite called WEST. So WEST stands for Women Entering and Staying in Tech. And so I teach also just to share my lessons learned and my failures. So there have been a lot of failures. And so I just want others to learn from my failures so that they don't make the same mistakes. So you'll find me teaching with companies like LinkedIn Learning, that's Linda, Pluralsight, Manning Publications, and even through the University of California. In speaking, you'll find me on a stage almost anywhere, sharing my lessons learned. Now, how can you find your voice in tech? And it's very important that you do, because technology can literally change the world. And so my advice is to find what you're passionate about 
and then use technology to amplify those passions and then share those passions with others. And you'll find that you'll quickly become a person of influence without even trying. And you don't have to be in technology for 23 years like me in order to make an impact. Just think about it like this. No matter where you are on your journey, there is someone that is not as far along as you are. And any experience that you can share with that person will help pull them forward. And my biggest lesson that I've learned being in tech is it's not who you are that holds you back, it's really who you think you're not. So it's the voices in your head that tell you you can't. It's the limitations that you place on yourself based on what your employer, what your employer tells you about yourself, what your family says, what your friends say. And I say, don't listen to that voice, those voices. Don't put limitations on what you can accomplish. The sky is definitely the limit. Start small and grow big. And so for me, I started with HTML. My very first job, I built websites using HTML. And then I progressed to CSS, then I progressed to JavaScript, and then I progressed to Java. So this day and age, I would say after you've learned JavaScript, consider a front-end framework like React or Angular. And then once you've mastered the front-end, consider the back-end. And so you already know JavaScript, start with Node.js, and then maybe Python, and then maybe Java. Just every technology that you try, it shows you what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, and it helps you find your path. Now, it is a very exciting time to be in technology. When I look at the advances with artificial intelligence and machine learning and computer vision and facial recognition, I just say, wow, like science fiction, what we see in the movies, it's actually real and it's here today. So tech gives us superpowers, so use those powers for good. And tech has given me a voice that wants to be heard and it can do the same for you. So I urge you, find what you're passionate about, use technology to amplify those passions, share your lessons learned with others, and you'll help people along the way. Thank you.